So what is extraneous load and how does it work in cognitive load theory? Well, uh, the tip is it says extraneous, extra. It's what you're loading onto the lesson above what is actually needed for the learner to understand and engage with the content. So it's the, uh, let me highlight it, it's the non-essential elements of a learning situation. And sometimes what can happen is these can misdirect attention. So instead of focusing in on the topic, the learner's kind of struggling to work out what it means and how it works, right? And it can be caused by suboptimal conditions of learning, where the learning state is not ideal, where there's noise, distractions, extra things going on, all the things we know so well as a teacher, and we know we have to try and eliminate as much as we can, right? Now, how do you increase extraneous load? Now, bear in mind, when I say increase, that means you're increasing the extra weight and taking away from the ability of the learner to make sense of the lesson, to engage and to make meaning. And that can be poor design of tools, the technology and the physical environment. Now we know that quite well where the teacher is trying to teach and what happens is the whole way they're using the equipment actually gets in the way of the lesson itself. And obviously there's distractions and disruptions and interruptions, right? Or what you can do is you can put huge time pressure on the student and rush through things and that increases the load. Or you can get them to multitask, do all sorts of things at the same time, forcing them to not focus on the task at hand. So now one of the reasons why I'm doing this for technical and vocational education is because I want to get to the point where you ask, well, how do we decrease this uh, extraneous load? What are the tips and tricks we need to be able to do that? Well, obviously, you can reduce distractions, right? But the one which I want to focus on today is the graphical representation of complex data, where you simplify it and show it cleanly and simply. And then this thing which says eliminating redundancy. Now, redundancy is a huge amount of repetition where you say the same thing over and over again in different ways, forcing the learner to try and work out which one's important. And then finally, getting the students to handle distractions. And that's really important. You've got to get the student to be robust as well. It can't just be that you as a teacher are trying to create this perfect environment. You have to get the students to be able to focus through distractions. And that's a part of your story. So now I want to give an example. And I want to see what you think about this, right? And this is a, a great example of uh, someone trying to do a design. And what they're showing is... Uh, how basically your breathing patterns work and how your bronchi feed into your lungs, right? And what you can see over here is they're trying to say, and it's hard to see, but they say you've got an upper lobar bronchus. You can't really see where it is. Then you've got a right middle lobar bronchus somewhere over there, and then a right lower bronchus. And you can't actually see by this line where it's going. It seems to go in the same line. And when you go to the left, you see that the left upper one, well, there it is, but you can't quite work out where this lower one is. Where is it over here? You can't really see. And then they give all the information about the two over here. And what I want you to look out for is the way they go, the right bronchus bifurcates into three lobar bronchi, supply the three lobes of the right lung, upper, middle, lower. And they keep on repeating stuff over and over again. Now what I want to show is a slightly different way of doing it. It's not much different, but the elegance of it really helps the student. Right, so here we have an attempt to do it differently. Let me just get rid of the uh, other thing which I've colored in over here. Now the first thing that you're going to notice over here, which I think is absolutely brilliant, is what they've done is they've split off the right and the left. Right, so they've put the right on the right and they put the left on the left now that's so simple but it really works and it helps you to see the right bronchus bifurcates into three and they supply the three lobes and what are the three lobes well now you've just got upper middle and lower and you can see that they've kind of shown where they are and over here you've just got upper and lower right now take a look at the simplicity of that in comparison uh, to 
uh, the one on the other. And this is a really simple thing you can do as a teacher, is pay attention to eliminating redundancy. Look how much stuff is redundant over here. Look at how what happens is you've just got the upper lobe, lower, middle, and lower. Over here you've got right, upper, right, middle, labor, right, low, 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 low. And then over here you've got all the information where there they've just split it into the two and made sure that then they don't have to repeat it over here. So absolutely brilliant if you ask me. And that's one of the things we want to teach as we go into uh, how to work with technical and vocational education and how to work with graphical representations which really work. Now for those of you, you can just leave the lecture over here because I've basically done it. But what I want to do is I want to show you how someone has really tried to do it in such a way that they get you to engage and think about it in a way where you make meaning. So now we've got the left and the right, and you can see what they've tried to do over here in terms of it, is they've introduced all the extra bits on, so there's extra stuff added. right? And what I want to do is I want to show you, over here what they've got is they've got the left primary, okay? so that's the left primary over there, and then what happens is you've got the secondary, and they mark it. There's the secondary over there. And then they've got the tertiary. And if you track it down, you'll see, oh, it goes off into another part over there. Right? So you've got like an error and an error and an error. Right? That's quite nice. Right? It's working quite well. And then you've got the bronchioles right at the end. Now, what they've done over here is they've only focused on one flow through. There it is over there. Right? Not all the other ways it branches off because it goes in all sorts of... And you can imagine if they wanted to do the left tertiary bronchus, they've got it over here. Imagine if instead what they did was they go the left tertiary one, well, it's actually all these ones over here. That starts to get very confusing. So they're very clever in the way that they avoided redundancy by just focusing on the one line. But then what they do, which is brilliant, is on the right side, they color code it so you can actually track it differently. You can actually see over here on the right side that here's the primary in green. Then you've got the secondary in yellow. Then you've got the tertiary in orange all the way through. And you can see it because of the visual coloring. And then you've got the bronchioles in blue. So that gives you two completely different representations and it enables the student to start to make sense of how this thing works through the graphical presentation in a way which leads to asking questions and making meaning about the way our lungs and breathing works. Absolutely fantastic.